Introducing team number one at a combined weight of 538 pounds. They are Josh 4x4 Jackson and Mr. TCB, the Cody Blaze, the team of 4x Blaze. Morgan Taylor and L.A. Cordova, the team of Vicious and Delicious. Hello fans, Aaron Hurd with you once again for another fantastic edition of PWA Wrestling on YouTube. We've got so many topics to cover, so many items to address and stories to update you on. We'll start talking about the match we're up, about to see here. Tag team champions in action against the young upstart team of 4 by Blaze. Josh 4x4 Jackson in the blue singlet. Mr. TCBB Cody Blaze in the green trunks. Green tights, excuse me, with the black trunks. These two young men, speaking of 4x Blaze, have been clamoring for any opportunity to get in the ring with the tag team champions, and even though this is a non title situation, even just a strong showing on on behalf of 4 by Blaze could pay huge dividends in terms of future title opportunities, so they're going to try to make the most of it. Oh, Nick Stevens has tried to play mind games with 4 by Blaze in the past, making them face off against each other, promising them opportunities and never delivering. The fans are clearly behind them here. They don't care who gets it done and how, they just want to see somebody lay a little bit of leather to these two men who call themselves the Tag Team Champions. Senior referee Johnny Long set to officiate here. We're going to have all of the champions in action in this program. Our big main event is going to feature United States Champion Tommy Forte in a very special challenge against the man who calls himself the Outlaw Heavyweight Champion. Tony James could be nothing other than a main event. Bell rings to get this match started. Cody Blaze 
starting things off for his team against L.A. Cordova. Clean break from Blaze. One of the things I love about the PWA is how our roster is stocked with championship caliber talent with few if any exceptions. Any man on the roster at any given time, given the proper opportunity, could become a champion. Cody Blaze, not exactly thrilled with that disrespect. L.A. Cordova tried to show, comes up with the arm ringer. Turns it into a hammer lock. Basic wrestling, but very effective. Switches to the side headlock. Cranking it in, you can see him try to grind the wrist bone into the side of L.A. Cordova's face. Oh, Cordova, though, comes up with a reversal of the hammer lock. Goes for a full arm drag and twist. Really putting a lot of pressure on the shoulder and the elbow. Cody Blaze rolls through. Big shoulder block. L.A. Cordova is, is a very, very effective wrestler. Say what you will about his attitude or his character. He's a hard man to keep down for long. In the middle of the ring there, a big hip toss. And Blaze makes the tag to 4x4 four four Jackson, the big 275-pounder. Oh, a little tandem offense there. This guy, Josh Jackson, has got one of the best attitudes of any young man in the locker room. Oh my, that'll change it for sure though. That kick right to the teeth. This is not a man I want to anger. I don't think we've seen anything close to what 4x4 Jackson's really got to offer. He doesn't even know his own strength. Taking some shoulder blocks in the corner there from LA or from Morgan Taylor getting into this match for the first time. Oh, hauls off with a big right hand. That one connected. Snap mare. Cordova doing the smart thing and keeping the big man down on the ground where he much less able to generate strength and power. He gets to his feet. He's using the ropes, forces the break. Oh, look at Cordova taking the shortcut here. Oh my. Not only do we have a big program for you this edition, fans, but we've got a lot planned for the next time we come to you on YouTube. Got a big Lucky 13 rumble as General Manager Nick Stevens has coined it. Big two count there, almost a three. Josh Jackson still in the fight with elbows targeting the collarbone. Now going to the chin lock with the knee firmly planted between the shoulder blades. Oh, but that could be just what the team of four by Blaze needs to shift the momentum. Josh Jackson hammering away. Builds up a head of steam. Huge splash in the corner. Goes over to make the tag. Trying to keep Cordova in their half of the ring. Nice drop toe hold. Cody Blaze follows it up with a big elbow from the delight of the crowd. But Morgan Taylor in there to interrupt the pinning combination. Mistake there by Cody Blaze in the heat of the moment. Turned his back to the legal man. 
and that was just the opening that the champions were looking for. Referee Johnny Long needs to turn around. Oh, Cordova really connected with that clothesline and an elbow right to the top of the head. Scoop and a slam. Talking about the big Lucky 13 Rumble we have set for next week. I believe all four of these men are scheduled to compete. Double whip. Double backdrop. Foot across the throat. See Cody Blaze sucking a little wind. We're having Morgan Taylor try to crush his windpipe there. The delusional one, Morgan Taylor, drops that big leg but came up empty. Brings in 4 by 4 Jackson. Just clubbing away, double axe handles. Oh, what a clothesline. Almost got the victory right there. The impact of that clearly stunned Morgan Taylor. Oh, what a, a, a foul kick. A low blow. Referee could have thrown the match out right then and there, but he wants to give this young team of four by Blaze a chance to make their point, make their statement. Again, the champions using the two on one advantage. But Jackson still on his feet. Flying shoulder tackle put it into that. Cover hooks the leg, but didn't even get a two count. The big man powers out. What resilience. Usually the, the bigger the competitor, the, the less endurance he has, but Josh Jackson hadn't shown any signs of slowing down. Champions though with an excellent game plan doing everything they need to do to, to keep the match going the way that they want. Snap Mare knocks Blaze off the apron, kick under the chin, but still not enough. As I said at the outset, fans, four by Blaze might not even need a victory although they've been seconds away from it on several occasions and make a strong enough showing they can vault up those rankings but they want the win as badly as they've ever wanted anything in their careers here in the PWA. Nothing subtle about the offense of Josh Jackson. Cody plays back in, trying to keep up the momentum. Got Taylor isolated in the corner. Nowhere for him to go. There's that power on display from Josh Jackson. Plants Taylor. I think four by Blaze are really making believers out of some of these fans here in the PWA arena tonight. What a great way to start things off. Oh! Nobody home on that big charge. That could be the beginning of the end. Didn't get all of it, but got enough. Hooks the far leg to keep Jackson from using the ropes, but still not enough. Even Morgan Taylor's got to admit the toughness of Josh Jackson. Oh, looking for the belly to belly on the big man. 
Very impressive, but he picked him up. He could have had the victory right there. What is this? Here comes John D. Here comes Anita. The Calvary co Cavalry come to get him some. John D's got that ax handle. More than dangerous without it. A one-man gang with it. From behind, the roll-up. What a big victory for the team of 4 by blaze Ladies and gentlemen, your winners, Josh Jackson and Cody Blaze, the team of 4 by blaze A stunning upset to kick things off here. The champions drop a fall in non-title action. Both of them apoplectic. No doubt that this is the biggest victory in the young career of the team of four by Blaze. The PWA Arena absolutely stunned by what they just saw. John D and Anita out there on the outside still celebrating. Well, fans, clearly a stunning way to start the program here with the big upset over the tag team champions by the team of four by blaze but after this break we're going to come back to hear some comments that i was able to catch with the franchise player chris crude about the ongoing situation between himself randy the rowdy hillbilly and the pwa outlaw champion tony james so we'll hear that after this break fans <laughs> PWA fans, Aaron Hurd here with you. If you like what you are seeing on YouTube, then don't miss the opportunity to see the action live and in person. The first Saturday of every month at the PWA Arena, 737 Slocum Avenue in Lancaster. Premier Wrestling Alliance is in action, plus select dates in towns near you. Check out PWAOhio.com for tickets for not just the arena events, but all events. Arena events start at $5. And that's PWAOhio.com for all of your ticket information. Thank you very much for agreeing to come out here. Now, it, it is my job to uh, ask some, some tough questions. I'm going to have to put you on the spot, but there's been a franchise player, Chris Cruitt, as long as there's been a PWA. In fact, for many, many years before there was a PWA. But these fans don't know a PWA without the likes of the franchise player, Chris Cruitt. And they've been through some good times and some bad, a lot of ups and a lot of downs. But I think what everybody saw just a couple of short weeks ago, when you were the guest referee for the main event of Randy getting his opportunity to reclaim that heavyweight championship from outlaw Tony James, the way things went down has uh, caused uh, a lot of people to question what they saw, a lot of confusion about where the franchise player stands, just what happened. So if you would, this is now your opportunity to clarify for everybody out there what happened to that main event from your perspective as the third man in the ring. Tony James cheated. Well, you know, Aaron, you're right when you talk about uh, the franchise player Chris Cruitt and the PWA. Uh, the PWA started, I was the initial PWA heavyweight champion. Nobody knows more about the PWA heavyweight championship than Chris Cruitt. Uh, we are just a few short months away from 20 years I've been in this business. 20 years, I have gone up and down the roads. I've gone uh, the highways and the byways. I've made friends, I've made enemies. 
a little bit of both. I've had some of my enemies become my best friends and vice versa. Let me tell you something. Uh, Randy the Rowdy Hillbilly, for a lot of years, was no friend of mine. Randy the Rowdy Hillbilly, for a lot of years, was sticking it to me in this ring, and he was trying to take the heavyweight championship from Chris Cruitt. He never got it, though. But, Randy the Rowdy Hillbilly, in recent time, has become a friend of mine. I consider Randy the Rowdy Hillbilly to be a friend. And when Nick Stevens came to me and said, Chris Cruitt, I want you to be the special guest referee. Chris Cruitt, I need you to lay down the law. Chris Cruitt, I need you to make sure that things are fair and square between Randy the Rowdy Hillbilly and the outlaw Tony James. I said, I'll do it. And I did it for one reason and one reason only, because I thought Randy the Rowdy Hillbilly deserved a fair shake. Still some um, ambivalence among the fans about how to respond to that. Uh, they don't feel that Randy got that fair shake that you claim you gave him. So, as I'm standing here in the ring, I see the outlaw Tony James go to get the cowbell and he's got, I know what he's gonna do. I've seen it a million times before. I was his tag team partner. Tony James was a good friend of mine for a long time also. And I saw him grab the cowbell and I did what I thought was right. And I grabbed a hold of that cowbell and I put it right back on that corner post. And then what happens? Randy the Rowdy Hillbilly, unprovokedly, he attacked me. He attacked me from behind. Then, Then, I did what any red-blooded man would do. I defend myself, and I knocked Randy the Rowdy Hillbilly away from me. Tony James got the pin, one, two, three. As soon as I leave the ring, what happens? These people turn on me. They turn on me, and they come at me like I've done something wrong. They came at me like I was the problem. They came at me like I was the one that did something. Have you had a chance to review the film and see exactly what happened from the perspective these fans had of those events? No. Oh, yeah. Aaron, I've watched the film. I've watched it frontwards. I've watched it backwards. And I've come out here to tell each and everybody just one thing. Just one thing. I came out to say I'm sorry. Because Aaron, it's not easy. In the heat of the moment, when you don't know all the all, all, all the factors that went down, uh, I turned around, I, all I saw was Randy standing there. All I saw was Randy standing there, so I have to assume that I was hit from behind. I was, I was attacked by Randy. I watched the film back and I see that the outlaw Tony James pushed Randy the Rowdy Hillbilly into me, which kind of upsets me a little bit. You know, I pride myself uh, on trying to do the right thing in the PWA. I pride myself on being someone that the, the kids can look up to and that the people can believe in. And when Tony James did what he did, he put all that on the line. He made me look like a fool. He made me look stupid. I talked to Randy, thank God he accepted my apology. I hope all these fans will accept my apology for what happened. And I promise you, the contracts are in the works. The very first chance I get to get in the ring with the outlaw Tony James, I'm gonna do it. And there's gonna be payback, Aaron. Franchise player Chris Cruitt here for the PWA School of Professional Wrestling. Do you want to be a wrestler, a manager, a ring announcer, a commentator, a referee? The PWA School of Professional Wrestling is your opportunity. 737 Slocum Avenue in Lancaster, Ohio. Tryouts are absolutely free from 4 to 6 p.m. on Sunday, 7 to 9 on Tuesday. Come on down, try it out. See if you got what it takes to be the next big star.
Back here with our main event, fans. I'm going to take a few moments here to address the comments you heard from the franchise player. Did his best to set the record straight, clear things up with the fans and with myself and all the other viewers, but still seems to be a bad taste in pretty much everybody's mouth. Somewhat bitter feelings, no matter what the resolution. You heard franchise players say that uh, nothing has been settled yet between any of these men, so we'll, we'll see what develops. We'll see what's left to un unpack in this situation in the weeks to come. One of the men at the center of that swirling controversy, outlaw Tony James. Taking on Tommy Forte. U.S. champion versus heavyweight champion. Neither man's belt on the line. As in our opening contest, a non-title situation, but pride and rankings and the opportunity at future title shots equally present in this situation in many of the same ways as I had asserted previously. The most important thing is that everybody came here to see a fight and they're about to get one. Tony James might have bitten off a little bit more than he can chew. Tommy Forte is on a roll like hardly anybody else in the PWA. They go back to the corner. Oh, a clean break. Narrow thus far. We'll see how long that lasts. They lock up again. This time it's Forte with the leverage advantage. This is delivered by James. He's trying to get Forte out of his game plan, trying to get him to act recklessly. Even less worried about breaking the rules than he would be normally. Disqualification or not. He's got that title, that outlaw title that he apparently spent a lot of money on. I hope it makes him feel special. Then goes back to choking away. Using the ring ropes. Tony James taking Forte. All the way around the block. He introduces him to all four turnbuckles. But Forte able to put on the brakes. Big reversal connects with a huge clothesline. And James King rebounding out of that corner, and he decides that discretion is the better part of Valor. Rolling outside. Creating that unofficial timeout. Forte going out after him. James being the first man back in the ring with the distinct advantage. This is what I was talking about earlier. He suckered Forte into a situation that worked for Tony James. Made Forte think about it before planting him with that slam. Winds up with a big elbow drop. Says he was just that close, but not not nearly close enough. 
Tommy Forte is in it to win it. But Tony James with a sound strategy so far, not letting Forte get any sustained uh, offense for any length of time. He's grounded the man. He's used the referee's positioning to his advantage. He's used the ring positioning to his advantage. All of the traits that make him a champion. But Forte has those very same traits in abundance. Kicked out not once, but twice, but three times. James trying to make Forte use up a lot of that energy that he relies on for those bursts of offense. Stomp to the inner thigh, very close to being below the belt. Tony James in all his glory here. Bickering back and forth with the fans. Putting a bad mouth on Tommy Forte. Looking like he's setting up for the figure four here and clamps it on. Trying it. Inches way back towards the ropes. Forte almost pinned in this predicament here. And Tony James, come on referee. Getting that extra leverage from using the rope. Forte fighting with everything he can to roll this over, reverse the pressure. Oh, you can see the trepidation on James' face. And now the pain starts to set in. Goes to the rope to force the break. Both men might be the worst for wear after that. Forte clearly favoring the knee. You know, James is going to not let a target like that go by. Weren't they able to escape that sleeper hold? Spinning toe hold, now he goes to the figure four. Tony James is the one going to school at the hands of Professor Forte. And you can see no matter who applies the hold, it's devastating when done properly. Tony James squealing like a, a stray dog caught in a trap on his ranch. He's going to be licking a few wounds on the way back from the looks of things, win, lose, or draw. The man who calls himself the outlaw champion. He's got to deal with the U.S. champion, the people's champion here in the PWA. Trying everything he can to force Forte to break the hold, but to no avail. Oh, now he's got leverage on the ankle, though. Very savvy maneuver here. But Forte rolls it back. That leg's gonna snap, you can hear it. If Tony James hadn't gone to the eye, only thing he could do, only thing he could do to save himself from a broken leg. Not to mention what for him would be the severe humiliation of submitting to whom he considers a lesser competitor. He'd be the only one. You're thinking of Tommy Forte. Go, 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 go. 
everyone else in this arena knows that Forte could have the number of Tony James. Plants him with the big power slam. Drops the leg. That big atomic leg drop there just about. Brought one home. Tommy Forte would have been the biggest win of his campaign here in the early stages of 2019. James back to the sleeper. Oh, down to one knee. Even more leverage now for Tony James. Crowd trying to inspire him. Hand dropped twice, but not that third time. Forte back to his feet. Oh, but can't get any separation. Joe James, excuse me, just throws him down. Oh, unwrap that wrist tape behind the back of the referee. Our cameras caught it, but the referee didn't. Got the tape around the throat. Forte struggling to breathe. Look at him try to fight it. Fans are trying to tell the referee he's choking him. Look at his face, he's turning purple. I can't believe this is how Tony James wants to win this match. Tony James, the kind of man that'd rather climb a tree to tell a lie than stand on the ground and tell the truth. And now it's Tommy Forte with the sleeper hold. Once again, Forte able to match the heavyweight champion stride for stride and hold for hold. Tony James starting to fade. Oh, but comes up with the side salto. Both men down. Might have a double count out situation here. Would hate to see an inconclusive finish after such a great contest between these two bona fide champions. Seven, Forte at his feet, onto his feet, stops the count. Not letting Tony James make it back to his feet. At least not without a little bit of assistance. Working on the arm. Where's he headed here? All the way up to the top rope. Again, a little bit of old school for Tony James. And Tommy Forte making him stay after class. A little remedial education here. Again, goes to the full arm dragon twist. You can see the damage that's been done. Tony James might have a torn labrum, a separated shoulder, a broken collarbone. Lord knows what. So many ways to damage that ball and socket joint in the shoulder. Again on the top rope. Might have gone to the well once too often, but no. Third time might be the charm, in fact. Pinches him up for a big vertical suplex. 
cover, hook of the leg. Only two, just that close for Tommy Forte. Man, what a great main event we've had. This has been a, a fantastic program all around, but if you have any doubts about the competition, the level of such here in the PWA, refer to this episode. We'll see just how wrong you are because these men are laying it all on the line. Tommy Forte with the better of that collision. Another big shoulder tackle, follows it up with a cover. Forte with a lot of energy at this point in the match, but took the big boot right to the jaw. And that patented leg drop of Tony James could be it for Tommy Forte, but not yet. Charges in with the big splash. Again, whips James across. Oh, but the referee! That, what a coward. James just blatantly dragged the referee in there to take that impact. Floors him, but... Now there's no referee to count the victory for Tony James. Here comes Johnny Long. What a way to end things here. Tony James with the win. As you saw, fans, Tommy Forte got the victory by disqualification, but certainly not the way he wanted this night to end. And Tony James shows his true colors with that post-match attack. Both men do leave with their respective titles, but you can rest assured that nothing was settled on this particular night. And that will do it for this edition of PWA Wrestling on YouTube. But fans, you do not want to miss our next edition because Nick Stevens has promised us a huge main event, the Lucky 13 Rumble. 13 men going to battle it out for bragging rights rights, future title opportunities, and much, much more. So do not miss that the next time we come at you here on PWA Wrestling on YouTube. But for this edition, my name is Aaron Hurt. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again next time for more PWA.